One morning, a nun drove a boy named Jono to an orphanage, hoping that Jono would be taken care of well there. However, it turns out that the orphanage is a place where children are kept captive, whose organs will later be sold. Jono was then put into a cell along with a teenager named Pelayer, with a convincing face Pelayer said that he could definitely get out of this place as well as save Jono and the other children, but after Pelayer said that, suddenly he was the one who was dragged because he would be the next victim. When Pelayer was anesthetized and the surgical process was about to be carried out, in another room, Arif, as the owner of this illegal business, had just received a guest, a wealthy businessman named Bob who came to buy Pelayer's internal organs. After checking while watching the surgical process, Bob asked Arif, had he ever felt regret doing this business and Arif replied to him that he had it once, but he immediately ignored it. He thought regret would only hinder success. Upon hearing Arif's answer, Bob suddenly grabbed Arif's shoulder, and at the same time, in an operating room, the doctor was about to dissect Pelayer's stomach, and suddenly, Bob pointed a gun at Arif, and immediately shot him. It turns out that Bob is actually Topan, a hitman from the Big Four who is trying to save Pelayer, who is none other than one of his team, and the children who were trapped and he is assisted by a nurse who is currently in the operating room, who is also his own colleague named Alpha. After eliminating some of the guards there with their trained skills, Alpha, Pelayer and Topan went straight to another place to rescue the children. They did their job very well as directed by their boss. Then when all the children are gathered and ready to get out of the orphanage, another member of the Big Four, also a sniper named Django immediately shows his skills, to help the escape run smoothly. All the children are saved at last. Meanwhile in another place, a beautiful woman named Dina was waiting for her father in a photo studio. Dina works as a police officer. As her inauguration ceremony was about to come, she asked her father to take a photo together. Dina's father is Petrus, and it turns out, Petrus is a boss of the Big Four. All this time Dina didn't know about her father's job. Petrus is also unlikely to be honest to tell her that he works as a hitman. But Petrus promised that one day he would definitely tell her everything. After taking his daughter home, Petrus returned to the headquarters to have dinner with his men, all the members of the Big Four, who were already considered like his own children. That night while enjoying their food, they saw a news broadcast about Arif's orphanage. In the broadcast, it was seen that the children who were held captive before had been secured, but the police chief named Hassan would still process this case because he thought that, even though they had saved the children and acted like a hero, they should still be tried for breaking the law, killing people in the process of saving those children. After watching the news, Petrus suddenly said that maybe in the near future he would retire as a hitman, and he hoped Topan, Alpha, Django, and Pelayer would continue his business. It turned out that this plan was carried out because he wanted to enjoy his retirement in peace with Dina, and he thought he had to protect Dina. Besides that, he also did not want to deal with Hassan, who was none other than the chief of police and also his best friend. The next day, when Petrus was preparing himself to go to attend Dina's inauguration ceremony of becoming a police officer, suddenly, a stranger with suspicious movements came, walking back and forth in front of his house. Cautiously, Petrus took the gun and immediately opened the door, but it turned out, it was his neighbor, who wanted to tell him that there was a courier who wanted to deliver the flowers he ordered. Petrus indeed, had ordered the flowers yesterday and he was going to give them to Dina. Petrus then told the courier to put the flowers in the house, but unexpectedly, this was just a trap. In a split second, this stranger who disguised himself as a courier, immediately killed Petrus using the dagger he was carrying. Shortly after the mysterious courier had left, Topan went to Petrus' house to give the hat Petrus left at their base. Topan's arrival made Dina suspect him and accused him of being her father's murderer. So Dina immediately shot him many times using a gun that was lying on the floor. Since the incident, not only Dina was devastated by Petrus's death, but Topan and his friends as well, because they had considered Petrus as their own father. After Petrus's death, the members of the Big Four then decided to go as far away as possible and eliminate their traces before Dina found them. Three years have passed, now Dina lives alone in the apartment, during that time she is still trying to investigate the murder case of her father, to the point that her work at the office is often neglected, because she is too focused on taking care of the case by herself. Her commander, who realized that her performance was declining, immediately called her and advised her to take a paid leave, since she had never taken a vacation during these three years of her career. At first, Dina refused it, because she thought that, only by working, she would stay sane and survive, but because her commander kept persuading her, in the end she took the vacation brochure he gave her earlier and went home. When she arrived home, Dina saw an and called Villa Paranise, printed on the brochure, and suddenly she remembered something. 
She immediately took the storage box belonging to her late father to confirm it and it turned out that in the photo, she saw her father was posed in front of the inn and wearing the same hat as the killer. Apart from finding these two clues, Dina also found out that in the photo, her father was not alone but with four other children. In this scene, Dina still didn't know that the one wearing the hat was Topan, she still thought that he was her father's killer. Dina was so sure that one of those children might lead her to find her father's killer, she then went straight to Hassan and asked him to find those children, hoping the case would be resolved immediately. However, instead of immediately conducting an investigation, Hassan thought that those children were just four ordinary village children. Dina was angry, she was very sure that they were related to the perpetrators. Because her allegations were not taken seriously by Hassan, Dina immediately decided to take the paid leave from her job and took advantage of it to solve the case by herself. In a very short time, Dina arrived at Bursi, a tropical island where Villa Paranaise was located. After traveling by taxi Dina arrived at the villa, and she immediately entered the villa and met Topan there. Topan apparently chose to move here and work as a receptionist. When he saw her coming, he immediately panicked, but he managed to calm himself down and took his uniform and then greeted her in a friendly manner, just like an ordinary and receptionist used to do. Upon arriving at the lobby, without further ado, Dina immediately asked Topan if he knew his father and the four children in the photo she showed him. He admitted that he didn't know them. Later on, she rented a room for the night, because she wanted to continue her search and would ask other people who live around the inn the next day. At first Topan refused and tried to get rid of Dina by all means, but she insisted and she had already given him the money. In the end, he escorted her to the room. While Topan was preparing the room, he saw two suspicious men come to the villa. Topan thought those two men were Dina's police colleagues, but Dina said she came alone. Topan then excused himself to go back to the lobby to meet the men and ask them about their purpose. Still with his friendly demeanor and trademark smile, Topan greeted them and it was revealed that both of them were hired men who had been stalking Dina from the beginning of her trip and intended to harm her. Not wanting Dina to be harmed, Topan deliberately played with them, he also turned on the radio on high volume, so that Dina wouldn't hear the commotion. The fight between him and the two hired men inevitably began, one against two. During the fight, Topan was pushed back and almost killed, but thanks to Dina who suddenly appeared and could catch them off guard, in the end, Topan could win the fight. Shortly after the fight was done, Dina accidentally found a photo of Petrus at the reception desk, and she also discovered the fact that Topan had worked for three years in this villa. At that moment, Dina immediately urged Topan to explain everything. After getting rid of the two hitmen, Topan told Dina that she and his three siblings were adopted by Petrus. The latter raised them since childhood. Upon hearing this, Dina knows now the reason why her father never had time for her all this time. Since she already suspects them as suspects in this murder, she then forces Topan to tell her where his three other siblings are, and Topan finally escorts Dina to meet them. They will first meet Django who has now started his new job as a healer. Upon arrival at Django's hut, which is located quite far from the villa, Dina was welcomed by Django. Although Django was anxious about her arrival, he still tried to calm down and served her a potion that can eliminate negative auras. However, because he was busy chatting with Topan, he took the wrong potion. It was supposed to be the crown of God, but he took the swamp frog skin instead. As a result, the potion made Dina hallucinate and more aggressive. Even when Pelayer came to show off his golden gun, Dina suddenly attacked them all and made the cottage crumble apart. Fortunately, Topan acted immediately by shooting the anesthetic right on Dina's butt. Finally, the commotion was over. Meanwhile in another place, a man called Antonio, who is also a hitman, and a woman called Alo and several former military members are slaughtering their own partners for greater profit. In the midst of his excitement for slaughtering other people, Antonio suddenly gets a mysterious phone call. The person who called him told Antonio to go somewhere because there was more important work he had to do. It turned out that Antonio and his men were assigned to go to Villa Paranaise to look for the members of the Big Four and also Dina. Upon arriving at Villa Paranaise, Antonio found out that two of his men he sent before were dead, and there was no one in the villa. Antonio and his gang immediately searched for them at another location. Back at Django's hut, Topan was forced to tie Dina up outside the hut, so she wouldn't act like crazy anymore, then he returned inside to discuss Dina's arrival with Django and Pelayer. While they were trying to find a way to protect Dina from the other hitmen, she suddenly disappeared from where she was tied up, and outside the hut they saw Antonio's men coming. They managed to find Django's hideout. Since the situation was already very dangerous, Topan planned to go to find Dina, while Django and Pelayer were assigned to face Antonio's men. 
Pelayer, who had never used any weapon before, as he had only been acting as a bait, was encouraged by Django to use the gun he had brought with him, but it turned out, the gun was not the real one, it just a lighter, leaving Django had to fight alone, by relying solely on his arrow. While Django was still trying to attack Antonio and his men, Topan arrived at the right time to help Dina. Fortunately, as she is a police officer, Dina is good at martial arts, so together, they were able to defeat the ex-military members quickly. She finally realized that Topan was no ordinary receptionist, and Dina immediately forced Topan to be honest. But this situation was not the right time to explain everything to Dina. Topan told Dina to trust him, he will explain it all to her later. Afterwards, Topan returned to the hut to help Django. It turned out that Django really needed help, because Django had no other weapons other than his arrows to attack Antonio's men. As an older brother, Django felt he had to be responsible for his younger brother's safety, so he told Pelayer to run away before he got hurt, then he was determined to face Antonio alone, one on one. When Django had run out of energy and was powerless to fight Antonio, it wasn't long before Topan arrived with a prisoner to threaten him. Unfortunately, Antonio wasn't scared at all, he even killed his own men and successfully landed another attack at Topan. When he saw Topan get badly injured, Antonio smiled with satisfaction. He then told Topan that he was actually the one who had killed Petrus because he had a deep grudge against him. It turned out that Antonio was the first foster child of Petrus, but Petrus threw him away, because he was so difficult to control. Out of his great disappointment, Antonio was determined to kill all the members of the Big Four and also Dina. He then proceeded to strike Topan's eyes using his dagger, but out of nowhere, he suddenly heard the sound of music. It turned out, the music sound came from Pelayer's Pantura carriage, he came with Dina to distract Antonio using a bazooka that was made by him, in order to give Topan and Django enough time to escape from Antonio. Realizing Topan and Django were trying to escape, Antonio immediately took his bike to chase them while carrying his gun. He fired his gun several times at Topan and Django, but Topan managed to attack him back and made him fall down from his bike. After escaping from Antonio and his men, they immediately looked for a safe place to hide. Dina then helped Django to treat the wound on Topan's body, but when she saw the gunshot wound, Dina was immediately convinced that Topan was the person or murderer she had been looking for. Dina felt that Topan lied to her and she was furious about it. She started to attack him by throwing a chair at him and then she left. Pelayer tried to catch her and calm her down, as he was worried that Antonio's men would find and harm her. Pelayer tries to explain to Dina that Topan did not kill Petrus, to prove this, Pelayer intends to take Dina to meet Alpha, so that Alpha can explain to her what had happened back then. Elsewhere, Topan and Django went to meet an informant named Bungalin by hitching a ride in a citizen's car that happened to be passing by at that time. When the morning came, Dina and Pelayer arrived at Alpha's workplace, it turned out that Alpha was currently working as a traveling singer. On the other hand, Topan and Django arrived at Bungalin's bar and when they met him, they immediately asked him about Antonio, who claimed to have killed Petrus. However, Topan still felt something was wrong, especially when he remembered that before he died, Petrus had mentioned someone named Sorrento. He also asked who Sorrento was and what was his relationship with Antonio. As an informant and a close friend of Petrus, Bungalin immediately showed the fake documents he had made, to find out who Sorrento was and it was revealed that Petrus' first foster child was Sorrento aka Antonio. Topan and Django then borrowed those documents to find out more about him. Before they left the bar, Bungalin told them that Antonio was currently hiring ruthless hitmen to find and kill the members of the Big Four. In a different place, Alpha finally explains everything to Dina what and who the Big Four was and who Petrus really was. After learning that her father was a hitman, of course Dina was devastated, but Alpha scolded her. She couldn't stand that her adoptive father was being called a murderer. The argument between these two ladies became more and more heated and made Alpha almost shoot Dina because she was so angry. Suddenly, a group of people opened fire on them. Fortunately, Dina, Alpha and Pelayer were able to take cover and survive from the gunfire. Pelayer was then assigned to save the children, while Alpha and Dina would fight against the hitmen. In the fierce feud, Alpha and Dina managed to work well together until the hitmen were killed one by one. But unfortunately, it wasn't long before Allo came with her bazooka and she aimed it at Dina and Alpha. Allo knocked them out completely. Fortunately, Topan and Django came to their rescue at the right time. They then tried to escape using the boat they had prepared earlier. When Dina woke up from her stupor, she found out that Pelayer had been caught and taken hostage by Antonio. Feeling upset about Pelayer's capture, an argument between the members of the Big Four finally took place. They blamed each other. 
Dina tried to stop their fight by reminding them that the most important thing here is not to blame each other, they should find a way to solve this problem quickly, so Pelayer can be saved. Dina then encourages them all to work together to defeat Antonio. That night, they immediately prepared the weapons for tomorrow's battle and they chose their own weapons. Alpha also made an additional explosive named Fart Lucifer 3000. Later that night, Dina and Topan had a talk, just the two of them. Dina told him many things and she also apologized to Topan for accusing him of being the killer of her father. The day of the attack has arrived. The Big Four plus Dina headed to Villa Paranise which was used as Antonio's headquarters and place of confinement. When Antonio and his men saw a car coming to his headquarters, he immediately fired the shot at the car, thinking that there were members of the Big Four inside the car. However, there was no resistance coming from the car, so he and his men opened the car door. It turned out that the contents of the car were Lucifer's fart explosives. In an instant, many of Antonio's troops were killed by the explosion. A moments after the explosion, Dina, Alpha and Topan immediately entered the villa, while Django carried out his duties as a sniper, keeping watch from a distance. After the guards outside the villa had been successfully eliminated, Alpha was assigned to secure the first floor, while Topan and Dina would look for Antonio on the second floor. During the search for Antonio, Dina was caught off guard and was eventually attacked by Vincent. Topan tried to help Dina, but Antonio was already in front of him. A fierce and long fight was inevitable. <laughs> Dina was overwhelmed by Vincent, because he was too tough for her. She was almost killed by Vincent, but as she is not a woman who gives up easily, she kept trying to fight him, even though her leg was almost broken. In the end, Dina was able to grab Vincent's gun and shoot him in the head. After successfully killing Vincent, Dina helped Topan who was overwhelmed fighting Antonio. Dina aimed a shot at Antonio, but it could not kill him, because he was wearing a bulletproof vest. On the first floor, Alpha was seen struggling against Aloe, and at the same time Django came to help her, but instead of helping Alpha, he received multiple attacks from Allo. <laughs> Fortunately, when Allo was about to shoot them with the bazooka, Django immediately threw the gun he was carrying and made the bazooka explode, killing its own master. The fight was not over yet, because Antonio managed to save himself and tried to threaten Topan. Antonio said he would kill Pelayer. Topan turned out to have a secret weapon to trick Antonio. He deliberately caught Antonio off guard and annoyed him by calling him by his real name, Suranto. As a result, Antonio, who felt uncomfortable to be called by his real name, told Topan to stop saying the name. He was so annoyed, he didn't realize that Pelayer was going to attack him. Antonio ended up killed by the dagger that Topan threw at him. After all the chaos was over, Dina invited Topan to talk, it turned out that Dina had called the central police earlier. She asked all members of the Big Four to surrender. But Dina promised to release them as soon as possible. But instead of surrendering, Topan pulled her toward him and kissed her. Dina was enjoying the kiss, she didn't even realize that her hands were handcuffed. Then the members of the Big Four thanked and said goodbye to her as they were going back into hiding, but they promised to come back soon to meet her, who they now considered like their own family. At the end of the movie, finally the mastermind of all this chaos is revealed, it was Hassan. But it turns out Hassan is just a minion who got the order from a hitman whom he called the Lady. The End <laughs>